Imagine for a second going back to the very first moment when you learned the secrets of magic. It was probably in a slightly dingy magic shop and you were probably pitched some kind of trick deck like a Svengali or stripper deck. If you were like me, you were totally fooled by the demonstration from the person behind the counter, you bought the trick, you rushed home, and with an ironclad grip on the deck, you attempted to show the closest relative your newly acquired magic trick. That was probably your real experience, but let's imagine for a second that you could reconfigure your learning of that first magic item. And that instead of the lackluster paper instructions that you got with that deck, you were sent home with a book, essentially a masterclass from someone who's put a great deal of thought into the concept that you're trying to learn. Someone who's taken the basic concept and broken it down to its most fundamental piece and then reconfigured and rebuilt it to something new, novel, and exciting. Someone who can help you take the trick and turn it from just simply a pick a card or think of a card trick into an inexplicable a can, a whole deck oil and water routine, a multiple color changing deck routine, and a routine where your participant merely imagines a card and it materializes from a blank deck, then becomes a real card and the entire deck becomes real. But this isn't a dream and we don't really have to imagine it because it's actually happened. As of a few weeks ago, you and I have the opportunity to revisit our youthful exuberance when we first learned magic. Only now, we have experience on our side and a product that can help us take advantage of one of the first tools we ever experienced in magic. I am of course talking about the latest release from Vanishing Ink and Ben Harris, Symmetry, Parody, and the Chimera deck. As a quick aside, I mentioned last week that I now work for Vanishing Ink and I wanted you to be aware of that relationship. I'm always going to be honest with you. I'm going to point out the flaws as well as the benefits of the book but I think that it's important you understand I did receive the book from Vanishing Inc. I do work for them, but integrity is very important to me. Anyway, back to the show. This book or box set is all about one principle, the Svengali deck. Before you stop watching and think, I know that old thing, Understand that the author, Ben Harris, has taken this principle in some new directions, ones that I think will surprise and delight you. The book itself, as you can see and read about, is a hardbound book, 130 pages, and full color. It's a Vanishing Ink product, so of course it is exquisite and tasteful, just like all of their employees. There are six-ish effects taught in the book, but more on that in just a second. This episode of Erudite Magic is being brought to you by my friend Don at Don's Magic and Books. Yes, that's right, Don is still a sponsor, and I'm so glad he is because he's always finding ways to deliver value to you, the Erudite magicians and book lovers out there on YouTube. Since we have entered the Halloween season, this week, if you apply the code SPOOKY at checkout, you will save 10% off almost everything at Don's website. But beyond that, of course, he still offers free shipping if you're in the United States and you spend $20 or more on media items. But wait, there's even more this week because if you buy $20 or more of items from Don, he'll throw in a free book or booklet and if you buy $40, you're gonna get two. If you buy $100, you're gonna get five, etc. So this is an opportunity for you to not only land a great deal on a book that you want and might be hard to find, but also you can get some free magic along the way with free shipping included. So be sure to shop this week at donsmagicandbooks.com. The link will be down in the description as always. Back to the review. Many of us stopped using trick decks right after the first participant said, hey, let me see that deck. But that's actually what makes this book so cool. Ben has found ways to display, shuffle, and organize your effects in a way that completely disarms your audience and assures them that there is no funny business going on with the deck. That's right, your participants will actually shuffle the Svengali deck, which makes some of these tricks way different than any other Svengali routine I've ever deployed. He calls the shuffle he developed the Resurrection Shuffle, and you will have two participants helping you. First, you'll display all the cards as being different. You'll give each of them parts of the deck to shuffle. They'll be mashed together on the table. They'll be overhand shuffled. And in the end, there'll be even more mixing. But when the procedure is over, you'll be left with a fully intact and ready to go Svengali deck just as if you pulled it straight out of the box. 
As you can imagine, after procedures like that, it would be pretty difficult for your audience members to have any suspicion about the deck since you've allowed them to handle it, you've shown them everything freely and fairly, and they got to do the mixing. So gone are those days where someone says, let me see that. Let's talk for a second about this shuffle procedure, the resurrection shuffle. Without giving too much away with how this shuffle works, there are a couple of different options for how you want to handle the shuffle. One version is completely hands-off. Your participants do all the shuffling, all the mixing, and you really don't even have to touch the deck other than to take them out of the box and give the cards to the participants to mix. However, that version will take a little bit longer. There is a little bit more procedures. You can imagine instructing participants who don't handle cards all the time on how to handle the cards and how to do this mixing. There's also a version of the shuffle that speeds things up a little bit, but it's a little bit more hands-on for the participant, and you'll need to do part of the mixing yourself with a little more dexterity required to pull off that version. The shuffle procedure is one of the main contributions from the book, and I think is a worthwhile addition to any Svengali routine that you already use. But it's also my opinion that it puts it more in the camp of being useful in an intimate performance situation with friends more so than a walk around or formal setting. It's just a little bit more involved and I think it will fly a lot better if you're sitting at your kitchen table with friends. That's not to say it's not commercial, I just think that there's a lot of procedure if you're trying to do a fast paced show. The performance situation brings me back to the tricks. Ben gives you his entire performance script, which is thought provoking, interesting, and of course, fully scripted. In fact, the format of the book is such that he gives you the write up of the script from the audience's point of view with no discussion of the method or what's required to go into the trick. That is done all as one chapter and he encourages you to think about what method would be behind this to see if it interests you and gets your attention. The method and inner workings come later in their own entire chapter. Those sections are more or less simultaneous, but this was a bit of a frustration for me having to flip back and forth from the presentation with all of the script and then over to the method with parts of the script. I sometimes prefer just to see those two things together, but I also recognize that's what I'm used to seeing, and this is a very small nitpick or gripe. Your mileage may vary. Along those same lines, some of the illustrations did not make it onto the same page as where they're referenced, which is something I always like to see, even though I know that it's not always practical or possible to get the drawings or pictures on the same page as what's being described. The illustrations are well done, colorful, and not excessive. The concepts in the book are pretty easy to grasp even for someone without a whole lot of magical experience, so I would qualify the volume of illustrations as tasteful. But back to the tricks. In addition to a clever and self-working A-can type effect, there are also sympathetic full deck oil and water routines using the parody deck. There are some color changing deck routines where the participant chooses a card, the deck changes color, their selection changes color, and then all of the deck changes to a multicolored format, which is really cool looking and reminds me of a full deck version of a packet trick. So if you like those types of routines, there's a cool application here using the Chimera deck. Finally, at the end of the book, there is a whiz bang finish where the participant imagines a card and it materializes from a blank deck. Then the whole deck is shown to have kind of drawings of cards that aren't completely colored. A little bit like the magical coloring book in more ways than one. Eventually, through a series of increasingly amazing transformations, the entire deck is shown to be a stock deck of bicycle playing cards. And while that version of the trick is not examinable, you can switch out the deck at the end of that routine and go straight into whatever routine you normally would do. Like I said, there's quite a variety of material from which to choose, but not all of them will use that shuffle procedure. They are all very fair looking, so I think there'll be something for everyone. Really, when you look at a book like this, what I'm always looking for is principles, because I'm rarely going to perform tricks straight as they are out of a book, even you know, if you want to, it's all here and you can do that. But for me, I want really good principles that I can get, and I thought it was great to see someone go back into this old classic and retool it to find new ways to deploy it, ways that aren't 
intrinsically obvious on the surface. And in addition, layer on some subtleties and teach you displays that maybe you haven't seen before, shuffles that you hadn't thought of, and just different ways to deploy magic. So this is my kind of thinking. As you can imagine, you'll need some special decks for this, and there are three provided in the packaging. Of course, he'll teach you how to make your own, as well as the tools that you'll need to do so, and it really shouldn't be that difficult, just a tiny bit time consuming. The packaging incorporates the three decks that it comes with so that you won't lose them with all of the other decks you undoubtedly have laying around. But this is also a trade-off because it's just a little bit harder to get the book out of this packaging versus pulling it off the shelf to reference it. This is the type of book you probably needed when you were first just getting started in Magic, but weren't yet ready for it. If you have even a small amount of experience now, I think you'll enjoy plumbing the depths with Ben Harris to get the most out of the Svengali deck principle. It is $75 at retail as of the time of this video, which is more than a lot of other magic books, especially of this size, but I think there's a pretty good reason for it. You are getting the three decks as well as kind of a utility switching device that's needed for some of the routines. If you had to buy the materials to make the decks that go into these tricks, I think you'd probably spend well over 20 or $25. So in reality, this book is closer to that 45 to $50 range, which I think puts it in solid value position. In the end, this material might just get you back into that old staple that helped make you fall in love with magic at the very beginning. And if you like old school magic like the Svengali deck, you'll like the discussion of old school magic in this video. As always, my friends, thank you for watching, and until next time, keep reading.